today we're talking about dropping a new electrical line on an exterior wall using a flexible drill bit. I'm also sharing what not to do because we did that too, so you do not make these same mistakes. There's a fire block or just a horizontal piece of framing about two feet below this hole. We needed some way to drop a low voltage line through this piece of wood. So welcome to the top of the entryway. Safety first, hair up, goggles on, leather gloves. We're dealing with an exterior wall, which most likely has insulation. Prevent fiberglass from getting in your eye. In addition to whatever kind of exterior wall you have, I've got stucco here. When that drill bit is spinning, I don't want any piece of stone to lodge itself in my eye. I also have the leather gloves. This is to prevent my hands from getting beat up as the drill bit is spinning. I'm guiding it into place. And over time, while it's spinning, it's generating heat. This is a piece of steel that's gonna heat up. Leather gloves prevent burns. The most important thing you can get out of this video is that angle matters. So if you're pointing your drill bit like this, and you can see I'm coming in next to you, this is going to make a line drive for the drywall, and you're probably going to go through the drywall. Yeah, it was a line drive. Even if you don't, and you miraculously get it through that horizontal stud, your electrical line will be right along the drywall. And when you hang up a picture, a decoration, you're gonna be putting a nail right through that low voltage line. Here's a mock-up of what's going on inside of the stud wall. We've got the back of the drywall here, along with two studs. This is the one we wanna go through. When you're inserting the drill bit into place, it's going to naturally want to walk to the inside corner inside of the wall. The problem is we want it to be along the outside and we're coming from the outside and we don't want the angle to be over here where you can see this is going to drive it into the wall. Instead, you want your angle for the drill bit to be parallel to the house so that when you have, when you apply the pressure, goes straight down into the stud along the outside. There are a couple other tools that you could use instead of just trying to correct the angle by force. And that is a lot of these sets come with a handle or a placement tool. You can see that this is an older video that I am updating to make it even more useful. But a good handful of people reached out to ask, hey, why didn't I use a placement tool? We didn't have one. Admittedly, we borrowed this flexible drill bit so it didn't come with a tool, but a lot of the sets that you can buy do have them. But you can see right here, people have really found that tool to be a lifesaver. The second tool you could use is a bumper ball. I've seen both pros and cons for that, saying that it was actually very useless, especially when it came to insulation, like the ball would just ride up the drill bit, but it is a second option to prevent the drill bit from going through the drywall. It's not even something you necessarily have to buy. Some people have recommended tennis balls or even just using a small apple, but you can clearly see that a actual bumper ball will have something that attaches to the drill bit so it doesn't just slide. The other thing too is that these are smooth. That's definitely an aspect that you want to keep in mind when you're having to deal with insulation because you can imagine the smoother surface of a bumper ball or an apple will be a lot easier, won't have as much drag against the insulation as let's say a tennis ball. Now that's just talking about regular insulation. I don't even want to think about how dense this rock wool comfort pad is. This is much denser, much less spray foam insulation. In that case, you will definitely not be using anything but the drill bit and possibly the placement tool. But if you don't have insulation in the way, I guess all you're gonna worry about is any plumbing or other wires in the wall. This is a heck of a lot easier to use. Perhaps we should have used one of these. 
and created a less informative video. So let's continue on. Next up, you wanna make sure that you have enough space to work with. Our original hole was what you see above my hand. And there is not a lot of space here. Space is always limited. We're never working in an ideal environment. And with a 72 inch flexible drill bit, it's huge. When we went through the drywall the first time, I asked my husband, please make the hole bigger so that we will guarantee success. I was able to fit my hand in here and I'm using the opposite side of the flexible drill bit here because I've already run the wire, I don't want to nick it, but I was able to get my hand in here and guide it down into place. While the fire block is two feet down, I can't reach that, but I can tell you that the trajectory of this flexible drill bit was not three and a half inches towards the interior. It's still along the outside, guaranteeing success. While I'm at it here, what you really need to do is push as hard as you can, as you saw in that mock-up, so that you're pushing horizontally, which pushes that drill bit straight down. Once the drill bit is in place, you wanna work in short spurts. This prevents the buildup of heat, as well as it gives you some semblance of feedback. So you get an idea, am I going through something hard like the stud or through something soft like drywall? This leads perfectly into, you should have a spotter on the inside. That way you're getting that feedback too, saying, hey, did I get through? No. Did I cut through now? No. And in that chance that you're able to cut off that spurt just as you're peeking through, you know to pull it out. Or if you go all the way through, that person can help guide the drill bit coming through the rest of the way. So rather than having you take off the drill bit from the chuck, come down the ladder, come through the door and remove it yourself, the spotter will help keep it steady, minimizing your drywall damage. And worst, you don't wanna just go ahead and reverse that drill bit back through, making your drywall hull larger. And you can see here, up at the very top, way up there, where there's a small patch job to be done still because the spotter here helped guide it, kept it steady, and all there is is just a little bit of work just to put it back in place. After you've successfully drilled through, if you're able to see the drill bit on the other side, you can use this as your fishing line. And you can see here that there's a hole that you can hook the electrical cord through. And if you're not able to pull it back up, because this is too much of a bend, it's got a little bit of an obstruction coming back up, there's a hole in the opposite end, you can see right there, that you can pull it on through and still run your cord. If you're not able to use your flexible drill bit as your fishing line, you can use glow sticks. These are some very long, flexible fiberglass sticks that you can daisy chain together. They just screw together, and we use two. And when you're running these through, you wanna make sure that you have a bullet nose attachment you can see the hole right there where you can hook your electrical line through and pull it on back up. Because if you don't have it in place and you have it backwards, you'll have to run it through again. Now the good news is the second time, it's a lot faster and easier to find that hole. We were not able to locate the flexible drill bit in the wall after making the hole in the fire block, so it had to get backed out. I'm not gonna lie here, it took several minutes and a few attempts to back it out of the wood. It took a lot longer than you see here. Just be prepared, getting it out might test your patience much more than making the first or second hole in the wood. The glow sticks were much easier to locate in the wall. Having a set of picks to fish the glow sticks out of the interior of the wall was also clutch, both when we pulled it through backwards the first time and when we fished it through a second time. I've included all the tools we've used in the description so you can use it as a checklist and you won't have to stop mid-project when you're trying it out the first time. Something to consider is that a flexible drill bit is not always the best answer. So when you're looking at your problem, is there an easier way to drop the line without the additional hassle of buying the drill bit, figuring out how to use it? Is it easier to make another hole right at the fire block? If that's outside, if that's Inside, consider all of your options to make sure that you choose the best possible solution. That is exactly the mentality I talk about in my follow-on video. I will put it right here when it comes out. Best of luck on your project. 
Of all the tips included, remember, the angle matters the most so that you don't go through your drywall.